All right, nothing we can do there for now. Your danger sense tingles. You sense deadly danger from the swamp. It might have something to do with the grasping, disembodied arms. All right, so the glowing light... The heavy odor of decay overwhelms your senses and makes you feel slightly nauseated as you survey this gloomy swamp. Anyway, these little glowing light things... You see a floating, coruscating ball of light. Oh, uh, it's not going to tell you. They're uh, will-o'-wisps. Which is the souls of dead children. All right, let's see if a Necrotor is uh, going to attack us <laughs> in the first five minutes of this game. Okay, maybe about five minutes. Uh, let's see, I need to... You... you grab a handful of rocks. Yeah, I'll let him actually say it. Why not? Oops. Always need a handful of rocks in these, in these games if you play a... I don't know fighter slash paladin or fighter uh based paladin I should say since you don't have to actually be a fighter to become a paladin Of course, it's the legitimate way, but... Oh, no, screen locking, you son of a... <laughs> this is going to be fun. And you can see it's now daytime. And come over here to the stump. You find five crowns that someone hid in the hollow stump. They're covered with mold and dirt, and have obviously been long since forgotten. And yeah, we're going to grab some corn. You take an ear of the corn and put it away in your pack. You pick some flowers and put them away. You already have some. Oh, I can't do anything with it? Just touch the staff. The staff feels warm and almost alive in your hand. You hear an eerie voice in your head. This I must first do. The sacrifice of life for one of love. You find yourself letting go of the staff very quickly. The curved staff has a very organic look to it. Its curves seem somehow feminine. You can feel a sense of magical power radiating all around it. Uh, the staff actually used to belong to someone who is kind of very involved in the uh, quest for glory history. As we will find out. You! How did you get here? Why are you here? Few strangers come to Mordavia. I am the Burgomeister. It is my job to know everyone and everything that goes on here. And let's greet him. The Burgomeister stares at you suspiciously. You tell the Burgomeister about how you came here. Do you expect me to believe such a story? That you could walk out of that cave alive? That the cave would be open? Tell me no more lies. Alright, let's go inside his office. No point in continuing the conversation in the street. Are you just sightseeing? Or casing my place? Maybe both. So, what are you up to today? Never have I heard such wild stories before. I am supposed to believe that a prince of Shapir stands before me? 
You do not look like anything other than a teller of tales to me. I am the Prince of Shapir. I'm the adopted son of the Sultan. Come on, it's hard to believe. To be honest, I do not trust you. What you say of yourself is unbelievable. And what you do around here seems likely to get you in trouble. If the pass was clear, I would ask you to leave Mordavia. As things are, I will be watching you closely. The old Adventurers Guild is at the north end of town. It has been abandoned for many years, since we have not had many adventurers who could cross the swamp. Seeing as you are supposed to be an adventurer, here, have a key to the guild door. Perhaps you can find something of use there. To the northwest of town is Castle Borgov. It used to be owned by the Borgov boyars of Mordavia, but the last Borgov died years back, and no one came to take his place. Some strangers moved in some years back, but they have had nothing to do with the town, and we have had nothing to do with them. The old road from town used to meet with the road from the castle and head south to the pass. The heavy rains not only created the swamp, but caused so much plant growth you can't see the road anymore. The swamp is a dangerous and foul place. They say that all who ever were buried beneath the earth there now reach up to drag the living to their deaths. I have seen for myself that this is true. Stay far from the swamp if you value your safety. There are other things in Mordavia to see and do, but I am not a tour guide here. Go off and see for yourself, but be careful. The gates of the town are locked at night, so be sure to return before it gets dark. It's dangerous to be out after sunset. Everyone in Mordavia minds his own business and does not go looking for trouble. You obviously do not fit in well here. Nope, not at all. See you later, buddy. Stay out of trouble and other people's business, and you and I will get along with one another. Otherwise, you will get me angry. I'm sure you don't want to make me angry, do you? Alright, next up. Let's go to the shop. This general store is cheery and well lit, thanks to the warm hearth. The first things that you notice are the cats. They seem to be everywhere. Then you see the shopkeeper, sitting on her rocking chair as she knits. She's a very, well, uh, sturdy looking woman. <laughs> so, you're the stranger in town. <laughs> I've heard all about you already. I'm sure you have. Uh, Olga here is the town gossip. Uh, anything you want to know about somebody, kind of a backstory on characters, or, you know, what is currently afflicting their situation, she's going to kind of be the one to fill you in if you've never played this game before. Now, if you've played this game before, you don't necessarily have to talk to her, but she's a good source of intel. If not, uh, kind of <laughs> pointed in a certain direction on many things. Yeah, polite, aren't you? And manners are as manners do, as my husband used to say. We'll see. <laughs> you can call me Olga. Mrs. Stovich is uh, too formal, after all. We don't welcome strangers here. They bring nothing but trouble. All the same, it's good to see a new face again. So, yeah, they're very uh, untrusting of outsiders you see she already has rumors right there uh, let's see what she has um, for sale. let me see what could you use well besides my regular items like brooms and pens I uh, really don't have anything else for adventurers like yourself now, I do have some lovely sandwiches you can use for rations and garlic of course you'll need garlic I've also got some oil you can use to keep the weapons and armor from rusting. 
And if you like sweets, I've got some yummy homemade candy. Although the garlic flavored ones have all been purchased by now. <laughs> I'll have to uh, make some more. Uh, oh, and the shopping bag to carry things in. I have a couple of those left. And now you can go through and ask her about stuff. I'm not going to go through every line of dialogue. If you guys want to go through every line. You know, I'm sure there's either someone who's played it, or you can play it yourself. There are plenty of places where you can buy or, well, <laughs> air quotes, buy this game. <laughs> Since I can't say what the air quotes buying is. But, uh, yeah, plenty available. Alright, so she has garlic, candy... Oil flask, really oil you only need it. Well, actually no. This is kind of the first game where you do need it, even if you aren't a thief. Uh, pie pan we're gonna need. Uh, the broom we're gonna need. The shopping bag is for the thief. Uh, we need candy. We're gonna need a couple of things of garlic. I think it's three. And now we just need rations. It's not really a whole lot that you need uh, money for in this game. And rations you don't really need too many of if you stay on at the inn as much as you can and uh, eat your meals there as much as possible. Alright, good enough. Um, let's ask her about rumors. Now, what would you like to know about? Yeah, Bella's a good woman. She's the one who really runs the inn. Her husband just gives orders. Someday she'll give Yuri a piece of her mind and good for her. <laughs> the things she puts up with. Bella, she was a pretty woman not long ago. Was not called Bella for nothing. Losing her only child really aged her. What a tragedy. Alright, so now we know that the innkeepers the husband and wife have lost their daughter. We don't know what happened to the daughter, but again, she's a good source for filling you in on backstory and kind of what you need to be looking for. The castle north of town was abandoned for many years. Then, some strangers moved in four years ago. No one knows what goes on there now, but it won't be for the good, I'll tell you. She's very suspicious of the people in the castle, but nothing is really known. And they'll get into that more the farther into the game we go. Werewolves are gypsies, no question about it. They change into wolves at night, eating anyone they can get. Nothing can kill a werewolf but silver or magic. So you be careful out in the woods at night, you hear me? The gypsy camp is not at all that far from here. Alright, so now we know that outside the camp, or the town, is somewhere, is located a camp of gypsies who may or may not be werewolves. That is a bad place, and you'd better have nothing to do with it. It is dangerous, and should have been torn down long ago. Many a stranger never came back after asking questions about it, so don't let your curiosity be the death of you. And, apparently, the monastery can kill us. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's get out of here. Goodbye. Or, as my dear departed Boris used to say, May the winds blow fair at your back. Alright, let's go to the inn. We've entered a small but nicely furnished country inn. Stairs lead up to the guest bedrooms. The floor is covered with sawdust and peanut shells. The barrel contains the few shells that manage to land in it. The innkeeper stares at you with an expression of fear and astonishment. It is several seconds before he speaks. This is the Hotel Mordavia. Rooms here are 15 kopecks for room and board. 
pay for one week in advance. Your room will be the first room at the top of the stairs. Uh, when you want food in the morning or evening, just sit down 